so uh, without further ado, I am going to share my screen. For some reason, I can't share a single window. I have a problem with Zoom. So I'm doing what I hate doing, sharing my whole screen. Okay, so uh, do you see my screen? Yep. Yes. Yes, we do. So um, we're going to put full screen if that works. Obviously, that does not. Uh, <clears throat> I thought it was this way. Anyway, let's let's keep this. Uh, presentation this way. That's fine. Uh, if that's big enough or that's not big enough, tell me. So um, yeah, I wanted to make a quick update of the Guava work, uh, you know, that was started some time ago. Um, you have, you may have seen, if you didn't, that's okay, because I'm going to explain again, uh, some updates here and there on the developers mainly and so on, uh, on, on some various efforts around basically being able to upgrade Guava in Jenkins Core. So uh, in Jenkins Core, uh, so I looked for an old cat picture. Um, we have, we are using Guava, um, Guava 11. Guava 11 was released in 2012. Um, and the last version is Guava 30. So um, we want to upgrade for various reasons. Um, one main reason is security. De facto, if we see if someday, you know, um, there is a CV uh, that is discovered on Guava uh, old version, and we may be vulnerable, the Jenkins project may be vulnerable, and then upgrading, fixing uh, will not certainly be uh, easy, as you can imagine, because <laughs> this is very old and nobody about, but maybe the Jenkins project would be able and willing to backport whatever. So this is a, a problem. Um, so we started looking into what it would take to upgrade. So um, there's a JEP ongoing uh, that was started by somebody uh, else than the, our team. So because our team at CloudBees is, uh, has started looking into the bigger picture, there has been a lot of efforts from various members in the community not working for CloudBees. Um, there, so I created just before the Computer Metal Summit an epic because I thought it was it would be nice to start and gathering things around. There has been a few PRs and, and so on that were you know started before. Um, so this is the one I I'm not going to look into it for now. Um, and then so uh, James uh, Nord on the call right now, I think. Um, so started to look into some some months ago, some weeks ago. Uh, you know what would um, happen if we would upgrade Jenkins Core, uh, the, the version of Guava inside Jenkins Core from 11 to 30. Basically, James used uh, the Rev API, you know, tool, basically a tool, uh, Rev API, this one, that analyzes uh, the um, um, API and their, their backward compatibility and so on, and uh, added that in the mix using use agents plugins tool that's a tool from the Jenkins community that going to be scanning the whole uh, bytecode um, of the plugins of the Jenkins ecosystem to find uh, potential breakages future breakages so because going back to my slides uh, basically what we want to do is to upgrade all plugins to check whether they are working so I'm going to show you uh, and it's going to be a good discussion following up the, the discussion earlier about the plugin uh, EOL policy, lifecycle work uh, that some people here were in uh, about the importance of clarifying what plugins we need to fix and the plugins that may be you know, too old to have somebody care about. So this list is the following. This is the plugins that may be impacted by the Quava upgrade. So I'm scrolling, as you can see. Uh, a few plugins in that list are CloudBees proprietary because of the way we scanned, but that's most of them are open source. Um, so you can see this is a small project, right? Um, so why am I today um, talking about this? It's basically to raise awareness because we need the Jenkins community to participate uh, in that effort. 
many fixes needed are um, a good way if you want to, you know, create your first open source PR, that's probably a good um, candidate work because most work are going to be, uh, should not be uh, very tricky in, in many, many cases. So I'm going to explain afterwards what I mean by not, not, too, not too tricky. So yeah, we need people, uh, but I'm going to now explain a bit more precisely what it takes. And you will see it's not uh, rocket science. Any question at this point? So what does need to be done to adapt um, plugins to Vova? It's, uh, you know, you're going to look at a given plugin and then you're going to upgrade locally. There's multiple ways to do what I'm describing right now, but let's, one way is to basically upgrade locally your POM to for Squava 30. That's not in practice that's going to be uh, used, but that will be simple and enough uh, to uh, run your tests using Guava 30. If that works, you're good, this plugin will work. And then we can consider this plugin is like, okay, stamped as okay to work when we are lending an upgrade of Guava 30 in Jenkins Core. If it blows up, then we need to fix this plugin so that it works with both. Um, what does mean fixing, which here I explain here, it means that first recommendation is getting rid of Guava usage when that makes sense. If you're using say Guava, um, I don't remember the name, unmodifiable list, probably you can switch away from this one and uh, use the collections.unmodifiable list API, for instance, that's the standard from the JDK. Um, that would be the simplest way when Guava is used, you know, if you're using one utility class or something from Guava. If you can't, then you need to try, you need to make it work uh, with the same code in a forward compatible way uh, between Guava 11 and Guava 30. That means that your plugin, if you're doing nothing, meaning not forcing Guava, uh, and then you will be using Guava 11, and then you force using Guava 30, you run just MVN verify twice before and after, it should work and succeed the exact same way. When you're we're in that case, uh, you are good with the pretty important caveat that if your plugin has no test coverage whatsoever, uh, what I'm saying is wrong because then you won't see failures, you won't see breakages. But then if this plugin is missing tests, that may be the, actually the, the right moment to add some to, to show that it's not breaking. So then it's going back to you know usual um, uh, development process. So maybe using code coverage tooling and so on and so forth to, to cover the cover usages and then going back to the process I'm describing right now. Questions? I was going to be a quick update. So that's uh, everything I wanted to raise and to discuss today. So if there's no question, that's fine. I think I'm going to is, is anybody just there? Just, yeah, not just looking at the right. Does somebody hear what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, I was just, just a bit uh, suddenly uh, worried that I was muted since uh, 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so we're ready, you. we're ready for you to start your presentation. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, suddenly I had a small, like a uh, cold sweat, as we say in French. <laughs> Okay, cool. So yeah, you see it's uh, an easy thing. Uh, just a few plugins to check. <laughs> so as you said, the, the reason why we're talking about this today is one that, that there's, this is something that needs to happen, but also that it's something that, that is very much parallelizable, right? That, that 
anyone can do it and yeah it, it's it's Absolutely. a yeah it's a great um opportunity you know like, like for instance in the jenkins community for for years we have been labeling some jira issues as you know, newbie friendly i think most of these fixes are newbie friendly um, if you're a java developer if you're not very much experienced in jenkins development this is going to probably be an easy one for you to enter you know open source play with it interact with nice people we have cookies um and uh, and and help uh, this thing to move forward because basically what we want like i'm going to re-explain that very quickly just to you know step back we want to upgrade jenkins uh, the, the guava version in jenkins core but to do that and not make the whole ecosystem explode we want to fix the ecosystem first hmm. what about with all the plugins that uh, are candidates to be deprecated, uh, applying the policies that we want to, to apply. All those, all those plugins that are only compatible with one four hundred and this kind of stuff. Uh, that's a very good question. So uh, yeah, uh, something like one hour ago we had a session that was pretty productive about uh, plugin EOL policy and so on. Um, so. I think the example you just gave is an easy one. We don't care. Uh, if the plugin only works with 1.4400, probably those plugins are already dead de facto. But if a plugin still works on the 2.280 or 90 something weekly, yeah, that's a different issue, yeah. Um, to be defined, uh, we definitely want to, that, that's part of why we were pushing for this uh, discussion today, definitely. That James was talking about it because I think as a Jenkins community, if we manage to have a lifecycle policy somehow, it will reduce the size of the work needed for Guava. Absolutely. Uh, those things are very much uh, intertwined. Right. Also, I asked, yeah, I asked because uh, recently I, uh, I tried to upgrade the version of the Apache Miner SSHD uh, in the core. And we managed to extract the, the plugin as, as mode, and we are struggling yet with the repercussions of, of bumping the version and, and so on. And then yeah. it's been seven months or something like that to do the thing. It's only, it's only one plugin and uh, has a few dependencies, 10 or something like that, not more. We feel you. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the thing to be. To, to note here is that that creating creating the PRs to to make the change is is one key step because then you can say look we've done our due diligence that the community has done its best here's the change if it doesn't get merged then we can or there doesn't there's enough traction in the plugin then Then you'll have a baby making very interesting noises on your lap. Um, <clears throat> so the, the, then as long as you've done that, then, then there's a second discussion that you can have that says, look, we've done this. Nothing's, nothing's happening. It's time to let that go, right? Or someone needs to step up to, to take, take over that maintainership or whatever. It's, sort of, it's, it's, it's not directly the EOL question, but it's, it's one where you can say, we've done the work. Now it's up to whoever cares about this plugin. Yeah, that's what we've done for digester work. Yeah. And I think that I think that that pattern is one that we should that we can continue to follow. <clears throat> to be to be to be frank, yeah. I think this is an unideal pattern. That's the 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 least worst case or something. The least bad least bad uh, way. You know, finding PRs, but then that means still, Liam, that you know you need to spend time finding a PR that probably nobody will attend to. Right. Uh, my my point here is simply that that, like, I mean, if it's a small PR, then great. If it's a large PR, then maybe it's. I mean, that's more problematic. But as we were saying, this is this is generally not a hard. These are not these are not hard PRs to do, right? Yeah, most of them. And if we, and if we have a, a large, uh, many hands make light work kind of thing going on, then great. 
right? If we get enough people in, like that that jump in on this, hey, if it, like, I mean, I think that's a, that's another point here that that contributorship isn't just I did the work and it got merged. It's I did the work, I mm-hmm. did the work and it and it moved this this project forward, even if that that PR does not get merged. Yeah, and and I think if if it doesn't get merged. And someone new has stepped up and said, this plugin is important to me, so I'll, I'll kind of do this. That That's a step towards kind of getting that plugin maintained. It's like, hey, it's important to me. I've done this work. I, I use the plugin and I want to keep, it's important for me to keep using. So it, it's hopefully a way to then go, well, this hasn't been merged. And, you know, come to the community lab list and they'll go, why hasn't this been merged? And we say, well, you could ask to adopt the plugin if you wanted and, you know, become a maintainer of it. So, yeah. I, I, I guess the number that, of that's... tools that I've taken on contributorship to, not plugins per se, but tools. It's like, oh, well, I, I want to do this one thing. Oh, it's, it needs more help. <clears throat> and that's how you, you that's, the, that's the onboarding process. Right? So, yeah, it's, uh, I guess, let's, let's. Uh... I agree it's not ideal, but it's, it's something. <laughs> I guess let's table this discussion on the, or maybe we can keep going. I don't mind, but you know, the plugin EOL is kind of a separate subject, even if it would help. Uh, you know, um, it's a connected but different subject. And you see why it was yeah, so important that we alluded to that earlier today. Yeah, indeed. Um, Great. I think we're done. It was really, uh, I think my next step is just I'm going to. To like one thing and one question somehow. I'm going to update, uh, maybe send an email to the development mailing list or something, maybe the discourse. Should I create a thread there, probably? And then the question is like, <clears throat> do you think I should create a Jira issue for each of the plugins in the Epic? I can automate something to do that. I'm not going to do that by hand, but maybe that would... Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I see you, uh, Ivan. I agree. I mean, I was not thinking I was going to spend my evening uh, creating 300 steer issues. Um, but yeah. So yeah, that would. I mean, that would that would be helpful. But I, I'm. I'm. Do we have a blog post or something for this? Because I think there's some interesting stuff to be talked about with with this. Like, hey, you know, Jenkins has this has these things, and I mean, it, it might be. Yeah, to, good uh, point. A visibility thing there too, because like good we have point. a great, but it's this is actually something that the community, you know. Yeah, that's a good point. That's that's even more why you know uh, I would probably want to create a Jira uh, for each because yeah, then we can maybe have a blog entry and then tell people you know use this filter. Everything that's showing up there is up for grab, and you can you know assign yourself with the plugins you care about, and then you you know it's clear right. for right. you or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I, I'd be up for writing that blog post. I'd be that, that's something I'd, I'd like to talk about. <clears throat> I think it's it's the kind of thing where it's it's worth raising the why we're doing this, what we're doing, why yeah. it's why it's hard, why it's easy. Kind of like just a it's an interesting view into the community, into the Jenkins yeah. ecosystem, right? Plus, plus, you know. Uh absolutely doing what we're doing right now, but that's scale because, you know, right now we are the group here. I don't think a lot of people are going to be watching and listening to that and so on, making it visible at the you know, Twitter account of Jenkins and the blog level would probably also, you know, uh, make the impact way bigger. Yeah. So I've, re- I've written, um, some actions. I'm going to write something on the dev list, maybe on Discourse. I will check with Oleg what he thinks. Uh, the JEP, we need to finish somehow, but that's going to be mid-term, long-term, because anyways, we know what we need to do for the plugin side of things. Uh, create JIRAs for plugins, and then write the blog entry about the web upgrade for yeah, raising awareness. And getting, hopefully, a, a scaling for, for free uh, for those like hundreds of things to fix. Thank you, everybody.